Hey, welcome everybody to another Seed to Stage tutorial. Today we're going to go over audio warping in Ableton Live, also known as Elastic Audio and other DAWs. Basically what this is, is each one of your waveforms could be considered like a rubber band, and if you change the BPM of your song, the rubber band will stretch to different time um, without altering the pitch. And there are many different al algorithms to allow you to accomplish this task in different ways that produce different audible results. But essentially, what you can do um, and I'm going to do this really quick because I really want to get to the meat of this and that's altering multiple waveforms at the same time like if you record a drum set. But essentially you can go in here and each one of these little transient markers right here, you can see this little transient marker, I can click on this and move it. So let's go ahead and listen to what I have here. Here's a, pian here's a badly recorded, I purposefully recorded a bad piano track, so check this out. Okay, and then here's the piano track. So I did this on purpose. I put these these piano hits in, in weird places. So so what I can do here, and this is really exciting, what I can do is I can click on, I can double click on this transient marker, and I can actually move it. So let's go ahead and move this piano marker maybe to the end right here, and listen to what our result is. Okay, I don't really like it there. Maybe I'll put it here. Don't like it there. Maybe I'll try here. Now that's cool. I like that. And as you can see, when I pulled that, I'm going to undo this. When I pulled that, this the rest of the entire waveform stretched as well, okay? So I'm going to undo this. And as you can see, the whole waveform stretched. So my process with all of this, whenever I'm doing these adjustments, is I'll go ahead of the transient marker that I'm messing with. Let's go ahead and get this right back to where it was. Okay, so this is the original waveform, okay? What I'll do is I'll go ahead and go ahead in time and double click on a different warp marker and what this will do is it will pin this part of the audio to the waveform. So now even if I move this around notice that this one right here isn't moving at all. Okay, So that's a good way to get things right where you want them and also preserve the original timing of the riff. So I'm going to undo this again and show you again. I know that this is the hit that I want to change. Okay, I'm going to go ahead in time and double click on a different hit, or transient you could call it, and pin it. So now I can go in here and I can move this warp marker. I wanted to move it to 1-4, so now. So now I can decide where I want this uh, marker to be, and as you can see this hit was a little early. But another thing that you can, t you can see is that this is just a little bit this transient is a little bit wrong, so I can hold, I believe, no, it's a shift. Yeah, I can hold shift and I can move that warp marker until it's right at the beginning. So you can also, as long as these aren't pinned, you can hold shift and move them. Okay, so I'm going to double click on this again, zoom out a little bit, and I want this to hit right on 4, because my timing is a little off with playing. So I can double click, turn it into a pin, and slide it over. Okay, so now we have... Okay, and now we have those three hits right where I want them. So remember, um, I you know I should I should have went I should have went ahead and and, and uh, made a marker in front because that's my normal workflow. But it's okay if you don't if you know what you're doing as long as you don't get lost. So essentially, now I have this. Now I have this other uh, situation where I want this hit to kind of be in here somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and time over here, double click on this so that this won't move and move this guy back. So I double clicked, pinned here, pinned here, now I can slide this over. And I want the next hit to be right here. So I can, now that I've double clicked that, I'm just going to go ahead and lock this part in time, move this over, let's go ahead and listen now. And I want these hits to still be where they were before, so I have this locked. I'm going to move this over and make these all hit da 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 like this. And I want my next hit to hit right here. 
So again, this is just the, this is the process. I'm going ahead in time, locking other things in, and I'm dragging things back. I know I want my next hit to be between six and seven. So I'm going to drag that over. And, and this time I'm not going to lock these in because I want them, I kind of want more audio to work with. So I'll put that right here. Now, something I want to go ahead and, and show you here is that at any point on this timeline, I can double click and make a new warp marker. So if I double click here, I want a little more sustain from this, from this note. There's a lot of gaps between these two notes. Okay. What I can do is I'll double click right here on the end. And check this out. I can actually stretch the audio back over and get a little more sustain here. So let's check. Uh, well, let's go ahead and listen to it without that move. There's a lot of uh, gap of audio there, so I'm going to pull this over. And now we got. And so now um, these last two hits, we kind of decide where they're going to go. So maybe I'll go. Uh, and I'm not going to go ahead in time because I, I don't really mind too much having this be able to move around because I'm reinterpreting this whole riff. Um, let's go ahead and maybe move this right here, and maybe this right in the middle as well. And let's take a listen to what we got. Okay, so now this is our, our new riff. And you might be saying, Anthony, there's a lot of weird sounds going on in there. I hear like swelling and strange things. We'll get to that in a second, but let's go ahead and listen to the whole riff. Okay, so you've heard all the all the strange sounds that are going on. Well, that's because what we have is we have different algorithms or or warp modes, as Ableton calls them, to deal with different types of audio. Right now, we have it on beat mode because nine times out of ten, people using Ableton Live are beat matching and they're using uh, the different loops uh, that have percussive elements and they're they're stacking them on top of each other. Well, Ableton goes a lot farther than that, and there's so many different ways to interpret. Uh, elastic audio. So another thing I can do is I can switch over to tones and what it says is uh, uh, tones for clearly pitched audio. So this is going to have less of an effect on the transients, the actual uh, uh, clicky sounds of the audio and it's going gonna, it's gonna to focus more on preserving those notes and not allowing as many artifacts to happen over notes. So let's listen to the difference now. So now we can tell we don't hear that weird swelling that happened around this area. Let's listen to it with beats again. Hear that? So now if I switch it to tones, if you let me listen. So as you can tell, switching between these modes has a lot of different effect, uh, effects and really can change um, the quality of your warping. Um, texture is a really fun one. You can actually get a lot of really crazy effects and maybe at some point I'll go over some sound design with texture, but this is just yet another. You can get a lot of, uh, you can see that these, uh, these are grain sizes, so essentially these are, this is the size of the sample of the audio and it can repeat itself over time. So if you mess with these, you can get different results. Complex is actually designed and Complex Pro, these, these are really, really awesome um, algorithms and they kind of preserve both the kind of the transients of the beats and the tones at the same time. I'd find myself uh, moving over to complex a lot. Okay, so now I've I've effectively uh, warped this piano and it's 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 how I want it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load up a set with a full drum kit recorded. Okay, so here we have a multi-track session where we recorded multiple tracks of a drum kit. We've got kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, toms, hi-hats, uh, overhead mics, and all this other stuff. So when you go to adjust timing of someone who's playing a full-on kit, you're going to have to adjust all the waveforms at the same time to avoid phasing. So um, something that's really interesting is that when, rec when live records long waveforms like this, like long sessions, like full-on song takes, um, usually they're not warped. So the, the method that I like to use is only select parts of this, of this track 
here that need to actually be fixed. And so I've determined that this section of the drums um, I want to fix. So what I'll do is I'll actually click at a place kind of before the part starts and, and a little bit past where the part ends. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these waveforms at the same time. So from, I'm going to click from here. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Um, and I'm going to shift click so I've selected the whole thing. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command E, which will split the waveforms. And then in order to do any sort of warping of the audio, you have to turn the warp switch on. So when I turn the warp switch on, boom, here we go. We've got all of the tracks. And as you can see, it says 12 clips. So when I'm editing this, if I have to make sure that there are 12 clips being edited all at the same time, or I'm really going to lose my place and get really frustrated. So the next thing to do is determine which of these audio tracks you want to actually look at when adjusting the, the, the time. What I like to do is I like to look at the overhead track. If I were to go ahead and click here, whoops, now you can see I've unselected all of the other tracks. So it's really important to have all those tracks selected. So I'm going to click on the drum head, and I'm going to shift click up here and determine that I have 12 clips selected. So anyway, now that I have all of these clips selected, what I can do in order to just focus on the overheads is command click on the overheads once. And when I command click again, you'll notice that it switches to the overhead track that I'm looking at. And the reason I like to use the overhead mics is because they're, they're pretty much uh, grabbing all the information. We've got kick drum, we've got snare drum, cymbals, everything. Every single hit is captured by this track. And they're close enough to the mics that the transients won't be too far off. So again, let's go ahead and listen to this. Now, in this situation, you want to be even more careful that you're going ahead and choosing a transient that's, you know, that you're probably not going to edit. So, you know, this one's, um, let's go ahead and find one that's, that's pretty close. This one's pretty close. So I'm ahead in time. I'm locking, I'm pinning the audio here ahead in time, and I'm going back to the beginning. Now, I've left on this session one of the backing tracks of the, uh, the production drums over top of the acoustic drum, so I have some reference. Because I'll spare you guys from using the metronome. And I'll go ahead and play this track. So as you can see, I've got hits all over the place. So what I can do is double-click on the first transient. I'm going to slide it. And as you can see, I'm just double clicking, um, locking things in place, moving the warp markers just by double clicking and moving them. So sometimes they're, they're right where you want them. Sometimes they're not. It's really important to be able to zoom in and zoom out by grabbing this, this top right here and looking really closely at this audio. Now here's a situation where if I move this marker, all three of these are going to move. It's elastic, right? Think of it as a rubber band. I'm moving this part. So all these other clip markers got closer to where they're supposed to be. All right? So I'm just moving these things around. Um, you don't have to put a warp marker on every single one as long as it's resting in the right spot. Do you see how this one's resting in the right spot? Um, and I still have my, my warp marker that's ahead. Okay, double click, double click, that one's okay. Moving this one around. Always looking, always checking. So the next thing I want to do is now that I've got kind of, I'm pretty close to, to my ahead time warp marker, I'm actually going to get this just about where I want it. Oh, here we go. Here's a situation where the warp marker didn't actually go to the right spot. Now remember, you hover over it, hold shift, and you can move the transient marker. So now I can double click and put it where it goes. So essentially, now I have my, my, my kit. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to check. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Now that's nice and tight. Nice and tight. So now, just, just to verify, see, I still have 12 clips selected. It's so important that you're always looking at this, because if you start editing one of these clips, you're going to have to undo it and go all over again. So make sure that you're always checking this. What I can do is, is I'm looking at the overhead track. I have 12 clips selected, but what I can do is I can click on the room mic, and as you can see, boom, those warp markers have, have placed themselves inside of all these different tracks. All right? So again, if you want to select, you want to select the whole section, okay, that you want to edit, and if you want whatever uh, microphone you or uh, channel that you want to look at, you want to hold command, click, and then click again, and that will bring that one into focus, all right? So let's go ahead and do this again from a different place, just so we are totally sure that we, we understand each other. So here's another part. So if I want to adjust the drums here, I'll go a little bit before and a little bit after, all right? And now I've selected all the tracks in this. I'm going to hit 
Command E to cut the waveform up. And the next thing is all these are selected, so the next thing I can do is hit warp. Okay? And now I've got this section ready to be edited. So I want to look at the overhead track. I hit Command click and then Command click again, and now I can look at it so I can zoom in and start my editing. And remember, the process again here is finding a transient that you like. Okay? It doesn't have to be totally right, and you can fix it later, but that sh you basically want to pin this in time. And why would I want to do that? I mean, basically, what will happen is if I'm starting to move things over here, you're just going to get so scrambled by the time you get out here. So always working backwards, clicking on something far away, going back, editing these, these transients, and then moving forward. Now, obviously, again, with drums, uh, you can because you have 12 clips selected, you can change the, uh, the warping algorithm for each one of these. But, you know, when, when we're editing drums, obviously you want to leave it on beats because it's going to preserve the transients the most. Sometimes you're going to run into issues when you get phasing in the cymbals. So, you know, you want to get a good take. You want to have a good drummer playing a good take. You don't want to have total crap because what will happen is, is that the more of this editing that you do, the more garbled, the long, especially the long cymbals, uh, the, the top end information is going to get. So you just want to make sure you, 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 you want to nail this part as close as you can and do your best to try to hit it. Um, you obviously can't go into each one of these tracks and change the algorithm in each one of them or else you'll get what's known as phasing because the timing won't be exactly right. So you want to make sure that all the tracks are using beats if you're editing drums. Now if you're editing other things, sometimes you have like a bass player that played with your drums, uh, you, dr you tracked at the same time, likely uh, both of them could be edited at the same time and that's another use for where you can select multiple waveforms and edit them at the same time. But nine times out of ten, if you want to edit multiple waves at the same time, it's because you had multiple mics on the same source and you want to edit them so that the, the phasing is preserved, meaning the time that it took to hit all the microphones um, will be preserved at the same time. All right, so that's pretty much the process. Always looking ahead, always clicking on this stuff. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching everybody. I'm really excited to have announced the um, Seed to Stage Academy uh, going down in Asheville, April 4th through the 6th. Um, if you want to know more about that and you like my teaching style, um, me and, and somebody else named David Krantz that I really feel has a lot of uh, teaching skill is going to be teaching um, an immersive course with Ableton Live. And if, if you like how I'm teaching and you want to get, um, you want to get uh, up and personal and you want to ask a lot of questions all at once, you want to you know, refine your skills to a, to a, you know, a crazy degree, um, I highly recommend that you check out the, uh, the, the web page. I'll put a link in the bottom. I'm really excited to have this happen. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you got usage out of this video. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Love you guys so much. See you next time.